It's time for our Wednesday devotional again, and I'm thrilled to share with you these thoughts each week. As a preacher, I realize that I'm not very deep or very profound in my teaching and preaching like perhaps some others are. When I study the Word of God, I spend time meditating and trying to learn what God has for each of us from the Scripture I'm studying. I also take time to read and study what other preachers say and what great theologians have to say uh, about that passage of Scripture. But the more I study and the more I learned, the more I believe that some of the great truths that God wants us to know are really pretty simple. In fact, I agree with Henry Blackaby, who said, The greatest truth in all of Scripture is this, God is love. God is love. In fact, in 1 John chapter 4, and verse 16, we read these words, And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. This is so simple, it's easy for us to pass over it. God is love. This doesn't say that God loves us, though he does. He's proved it in many ways. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. How could we ever doubt this kind of love? He loves as no one else can love. He loves as no one else ever has loved. But our thought is not that God loves. Our thought today is God is love. Again, it's not just that God loves everyone, though he does. It's not just that God's love is amazing, though it is. The statement here is that God is love. I'm not sure I can really explain it, but I want to try. As I've tried to find words to explain it, I've probably jumped in a little deeper than I really uh, need to, jumped in over my head. But the Bible says God is love. Think for a moment about what this means. God loves you and me even though we don't deserve his love. Many times as a Christian, I have failed my God. Perhaps, probably, you have too. In my failure, I feel so badly, and I wonder, how could he love me? But sometimes it's my actions, sometimes it's my attitudes. But I fail to meet his expectations. I fail to obey his commandments. And here's what's so amazing. He loves me anyway. Not because I deserve it, but because he is love. The best illustration I can think of, perhaps, is uh, an illustration of new parents and the way they love their brand new baby. This would be especially true probably with the first child. A baby, when he's born, has done nothing worthy of love. All the baby did was be born, and the baby didn't have much choice in that. But parents, you watch parents. You watch new parents. When a baby whimpers or cries, when a baby even seems to have a need, the parents are there. You can see in their eyes the love. You can see in their attitudes. You can see in their actions their love for that child. Now, this illustration is limited because most of us know of families, parents who were unresponsible, irresponsible rather, and they would abandon children or they've even abused children. But the fact is we know a little bit about the love that parents can have for an undeserving child child. We also understand the limits of parents loving their children. God, who loves us though we don't deserve it, has no limits because God is love. Think about this. Since God is love, the only way he can relate to us is in love. His offer of the gift of salvation is in love. His offer isn't because we deserve it, the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He offers his love, his gift of salvation to the world, for God so loved the world. But it's offered because of his love. Think about this. If we're saved, we're trying to follow his direction. 
his directions for us, his guiding in our lives, his leadership in our lives, is all filtered through his love because God is love. Uh, he's the good shepherd, and according to the 23rd Psalm, we know that he can lead us through the valley of the shadow of death. But when he does that, it's in love. He can lead us, lead us through painful times, through storms of life, through trials and tribulations and through deep valleys that we think we can't get through. Yet, we know that God is love. So, His direction in our lives is because of His love. His wonderful gifts and blessings are because of His love. He is love. We sometimes think, well, I'm being blessed because of my behavior. I'm being blessed because of my faithfulness. I'm being blessed because of my giving. I'm being blessed because I'm using my talents for God. Oh, no. We're being blessed because of His love. They are gifts of His love. And listen to this. Even His discipline is in love. Because He is love. God is love. When He disciplines us, it's not because He hates us. Not because he wants to hurt us, it's because he loves us. As parents, sometimes, my wife and I, sometimes we disciplined in love, but there were times, I'm afraid, that we disciplined because of disappointment or disciplined even in anger. His discipline, even, is in love. This week I was with a family who had just gone through the loss, the death, of a family member and I saw in their eyes and in their attitudes the pain that they were experiencing I wept with them and felt with them what they were going through somewhat and I wanted to be able to assure them that God's timing even in this death was because of his love I'm not claiming I totally understand this I'm not claiming this will help you understand it even more, but I want you to realize and remember that God is love. Every way he relates to us is in love. Then finally, this thought, we can't escape his love. He loves us with an everlasting love. Do you remember the story of the prodigal son? Do you remember that young man who had uh, taken his inheritance and left home, probably breaking the heart of his father? He had spent his inheritance foolishly and wastefully. He had wasted even part of his life. But when he went home, when he went back to the father, his father's arms were wide open. His father had never stopped loving him. And he welcomed him home in love. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of love, though we don't deserve it, he offers us. Why? Because God is love.